hospital where medication is also free and the test is also done free, more than 65% still have a very bad control of uh, diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Again, this is something we were not expecting. And again, uh, nearly half the sample had complications. And again, there's a list of neuropathy, retinopathy, nephropathy, a detailed list of people who were having complications. Uh, again, about roughly a quarter of the people had some comorbid other illness like hypertension and stroke. Again, the problem keeps on adding up. Uh, one, two, three, again and again. The more longer the diabetes, the more the complications, the more the comorbid issues. Um, again, these are the, some of the scores that we found and, uh, in, the, in the diabetic group. And again, this, as you can see, some of I won't go into the details, but there's a significant difference in the anxiety depression score, the way to five is to measure depression, the quality of life index, and the PHP line. Um, again, the second part that was interesting that we found was that the males were taking the brunt of the problem. The males showed even higher anxiety and depression level. I want to just focus on the third part, so the cases of anxiety and cases of depression. And the male uh, figure more prominently as compared to the females. Uh, again, same for the PHP 9 and WHO 5 scores. So uh, the results and the explanation is again the same that uh, anxiety and depression are very common in the people suffering from type 2 diabetes and the quality of life is also significantly affected. So uh, again, that's the conclusion of the pilot. And again, the, if you look at the literature, for it mentioned some studies and uh, the, the range of anxiety, depression and diabetes, the range of different figures in different studies so vast between 20 and 70, 80 percent that you really can't, don't know where to pick up this, the figure and I hope our studies that we do will find a midline figure where everybody can agree on. So it's not that, uh, it's not that easy to find a central core figure that this is the percentage of psychiatric comorbidity in diabetic patients. But certainly most of the Studies have found that poor self-care impaired glycemic control, microvascular, <coughs> macrovascular complications, costs, and quality of life is affected in most of the research that has been done so far. Again, prognosis-wise, it's a very serious matter, and most of the studies have found that uh, treatment, and especially in treatment resistance and mortality, the prognosis is very bad. Um, <coughs> again, under-recognition is a serious problem. And if I can show you if it's under-recognized in an institution like ours, then the problem is even worse as we go towards the periphery. So this is not just for Pakistan, other countries have also find that under-recognition is a major issue when we come to this kind of a problem. Um, uh, regional studies, uh, I think I found this very interesting, the Bangladeshi study, which again sort of complements what we found in the pilot, and we found a five-fold increase in the prevalence of clinical significant levels of depression in men and again uh, they, this was more in men so that again I'm just matching it with what we found as well in the pilot. So uh, the conclusion is depression and anxiety are common in diabetic populations and more the complications, more the problems, psychiatric problems that the person will face and more the duration of treatment. So again uh, this is a good initiative and I think uh, we can focus on what we want out of this and the, that would be that we would be able to better educate our physician colleagues and we would be able to be in a position where we can highlight this important comorbid issue and we can proceed further so that we can help the diabetic patients. Thank you very much. Diabetes, could you please come sir?